for, for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. Welcome back to the Pleb Underground, everyone. That's right, episode 107. Walton is at, I think, a conference in Berlin. So joining us today, or joining me today, actually, is sponsor and friend to the show, Don Ticelli. Don, thank you. Hey, how's it going, much. everybody? What's up, man? Thank you so much for joining joining the awesome Pleb Underground episode that we are going to have, because I, I mean, look, pre-show, we were talking about the HBO stuff, going down the rabbit hole, the, the Satoshi rabbit hole, and also going over all the incredible projects that you're doing uh, with No Hue and Stack Chain Magazine and ASO Bitcoin. Yeah, we're going to get into all that stuff. But before we do, we are going to dive into the numbers. The Pleb Underground is brought to you by Thunder Funder. Check it out, thunderfunder.com. Thunder Funder is a funding portal registered with the SEC and a member of FINRA. Their mission is to provide retail investors access to investments while supporting the growth of open source projects. They love Bitcoin. Check out their shitcoins. That's thunderfunder.com. The numbers, of course, brought to us by Time Chain Stats and Time Chain Calendar. I can't do Walton's part here. Let's take a look at those numbers. <laughs> at the time of this recording, the block height is, uh, I was about to say the, the Bitcoin price, the block height is 865,201. The Bitcoin fiat exchange, 62,353. Big max per BTC, you're still getting over 12K. 12,108. Total public lightning capacity, 5,269. Fastest fee, 41 sats per V-byte. That's like the highest it's been in weeks. Ugh going on there anyways moscow time 1603 yeah so honestly man i thought we were gonna have 58k for this show um we were there we were, we were there just yesterday approximately and and now we're not so it's kind of a bummer it is kind of a bummer but still still <laughs> and, uh, it's always been 58k if you're if you're looking at it right now and, and you think it's higher that's uh that's on you my my block clock right now i can go grab it it says 58k still so it's uh it's, it's uh, forever it, 58k you know right now it's uh high time preference versus low time preference you know yeah i, I, the, I can people, definitely the people who know that it's it's going to be 58k until enough respect is there is uh the people who will just sit back and watch watch everybody else complain okay don why is it 58k forever like why is this happening to us <laughs> what did we well, do right to now, deserve right this? now <laughs> right right now you know um there's 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 a lot behind it um uh there's if if you want to dig further, there's a lot biblical behind it, but also it is the local top of the last cycle and the local bottom of this cycle. And so right now it's getting the the, the people who have only been in, in it for one cycle are, are still just trying to learn what that means. Um, and it really gets to a point where we also have AI that's going into it, which is just also betting against something that just needs to be appreciated. I I am very curious about the biblical reference. I am a, I'm a huge fan of that type of stuff. So please, you, you have me, you, you have me no, intrigued with this. No, no, that's, that's, do this? that's, that's, no, that's for everybody to go ahead and, and, and don't trust verify. I want you guys all to read about that. Okay. I'm, I will, I will dig into it and I will come back to you on that because that, that definitely has piqued my interest. Okay. So there's a lot, there's a lot to it, but I, you know, can you give a hint, anything? Breadcrumbs, come on, breadcrumbs. Okay, I, I, fine. I, I guess fifty eight k was a breadcrumb. I just gave a handful of hints. I just gave a handful of hints. I'm trying you to know, extract more information. Um, it, it started, you know. It honestly, I will say, you know, um, uh, 
Dennis is the one that that fully started it, drew the first chart and everything. But it's it's going to more, and there's there's a lot more of an understanding to it um, than a lot of people understand. And there was initially TA behind it, um, but there's 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 a lot to understand, and I think a lot of people are starting to understand that now. And it's not a, it's it's a don't trust verify thing. Uh, I'm not going to tell people what to think. Just do your research, but the number is important and will continue to be so. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay, now now it's a mystery, the mystery of 58K. Damn it. I I honestly just thought you guys we're still were messing here. with yellow. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, you know, I, honestly, I just, I just <laughs> You know, this was, uh, this was a meme war 58K versus meme factory this this was a thing that happened the first hit what four years ago almost uh what was it 2021 so three three four years ago um yellow yellow is uh i mean yellow appreciates 58k gang i know but he also but he also appreciates a good meme meme war and that's what we're doing so and I appreciate uh, the entertainment, and and believe me, Bitcoiners oh, are for, loving this. We're we're here to get everybody through the then this having cycle and and to beyond. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, on that note, I'm pulling this tweet up right here from Zipine Factory. Oh, yeah. Okay, the yeah, okay, because I saw this yesterday, saw this, and and right away, right away, I thought of you. I'm like Don's just mm-hmm. Don, Don's just messing with the yellow puppet. This is what he's doing, you know. He's just, but, but, I'd, like now you're telling me there's deeper significance. There's deeper significance. Well, okay. Well, I will do my research. I will get back to you on that. Um, okay. <laughs> we're we're gonna we're gonna move on from the uh, from the 58k uh, from the 58k meme, and we're gonna before the show uh, we started. I'm sure, to dis- we'll revisit. Yeah, no, we're definitely gonna revisit uh, because I, I want to know the or. Well, you kind of explained the origins of the 58k gang just there, so. Um, it was uh, it was Dennis that put together the first chart, but again, I'm very curious about the biblical reference. So, uh, but moving on, moving on from the uh, the 58k gang, I think we're gonna let's take a look at, or actually, let's just talk about the uh, the HBO special. We'll uh, we'll start with that. We'll start with mm-hmm. that. Um, I had Yellow on yesterday. Uh, he came on and explained a very interesting theory um, that essentially this um, revelation about Peter Todd um, could be that. It, it's new FUD for this cycle, right? New FUD to possibly cause a, um, you know, kind of like a legacy banker's fork, so to speak, uh, you know, by introducing this tail emission, this this 2%. But uh, when you and I started talking, you had a, a very different take on this. Um, so let's let, let's dive into it. What did you, I mean, did you watch the whole thing or what did you think? I, uh, I just got finished watching it like right before this. Um, and you could tell that the documentary was done by a Bitcoiner. Uh, but, um, obviously the, the way that it was done was to be sold to the mainstream media. Right. So the intro, the first 20 minutes, I feel like it actually like showed a lot of, you know, FUD and everything going into, okay, Bitcoin's nothing, like showing that obviously it's something, right? Um, And the first 20 minutes of it was really showing that. Um, But when you are trying to sell something to to get onto mainstream media, um, you, instead of focusing on ideals, you have to focus on people. And so the rest of it just dived into who is Satoshi and needing a narrative around that, where everybody who is now maybe interested in Bitcoin, maybe this is the first mainstream point uh, that they've, you know, that they're watching that they're like, oh, this is a, you know, a documentary, uh, something on HBO that I can maybe trust, you know, because I like the White Lotus, like I might like this. Uh, So now it's basically their way of of putting focus on people instead of the idea 
And that's exactly where you saw it go. It started as an idea in the first 20 minutes. And then for the remainder, the hour and 20 after that, I uh, was just bo- basically focused on who Satoshi is. And at this point, it doesn't matter who Satoshi is. And that's kind of the point, um, which is ironic because you see those two avenues and now they try to make it about who Satoshi is. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter anymore. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a good point. And I totally agree. I, I mean, I think the relevance of who Satoshi is uh, probably died, I don't know, at, at least five years ago. Uh, but but it just keeps getting brought up in my my personal opinion. So it's it's interesting that uh, I, I personally found the first 20 minutes to be like a giant like marketing thing, um, which I, I at the same time, like I understand, right? Like it's a movie. You need to get people engaged. You need to get people excited, right? Like so there, there's a certain aspect of like essentially progressively bringing people uh, uh, bringing people's attention further and further along. So I. I can get it right. Like I, I can get that. Um, for me, I, it, I just found that like, to your point, that whole search for Satoshi, I, I found, even though like, I get that it was done by a Bitcoiner, I feel that it was somewhat lazy, you know, like the, the evidence that was brought in all the way at the end, it's like, uh, Peter Todd, because this Bitcoin talk.org thread, it's like, meh. you know, like Adam back because, oh, he was here before. And then he randomly showed up and pretend he didn't know what was going on. It's like, I don't know. I just feel like I feel like they could have gone deeper, uh, but only in terms of answering the original question that they were asking, right? Like the original question was who is Satoshi? And they did a poor job, I find, of actually like I just figured that we'd have more of a deep dive. I guess I'm just saying this in a very long roundabout way. It, so it, it, I don't it know. could have been it could have been an absolute deeper dive. Um, I've dived deeper. Uh, right. And, and, and I don't know if I've been along too, too long now at this point, but uh, honestly not compared to a lot of, of others. Um, I mean, I have an opinion. Um, Satoshi is about five people. Um, People forget people forget about the the date like Satoshi's birthday and certain meetings that happened within these threads that were thought to be anonymous but um unthreaded uh between a lot of um computer uh mm. entities like Apple, uh Samsung, uh Toshiba um there were a lot of companies that as the internet was rising um realized that privacy was becoming an issue within you know the internet um it's a theory but i i have uh i i really think that there's people don't look at the the steve jobs wozniak meetings and and a few other anonymous things from back in on those dates either um which i think has gotten buried a little bit but we all have our we all have our uh theories and uh it doesn't matter at this point because by design we're in charge now the network it's it's uh it's interesting that uh that you bring that up um that it's five, five people, because I've always, and again, with no real evidence, right, just kind of digging down the rabbit hole, I've always gone back and forth between the three to five people. I don't know why, you know, like it just, I feel like it's, it can't be one, right? Like for whatever reason, it's just like one is out of the question, two is just not enough and then at, then i get to three and i'm like three becomes plausible but then i i was always like yeah but maybe it's a group right and then that's where i get to the whole group. right that's where i get to the whole okay maybe it's five but then i sometimes go back to you know maybe it's just three <laughs> I, don't know. I think i think i think no i think it's we at least know. i think it's at i think four to six 
Um, probably an odd number if they were smart. Um, I think maybe one of the people within that special is maybe involved. One. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, I would agree. I would Adam, agree with that no, statement. And no, no, no. I would agree. Adam back. Adam back knows, but uh, he is. I don't think he is one of the the initial group. Um, mm. but he knows at least one person from that group. Um, if you think about it, you know, I I like that. I mean, it's it's crazy. You think about like Steve Jobs was always about privacy. Um, while he was alive, he did fight the government on a lot of privacy things through Congress. Um, and you know, uh, he knew he was dying too. So it's a matter of when he figured that out or whatever, but I feel mm-hmm. like he was maybe one of the early pioneers of it. And everybody was going to be like, Oh, blah, blah, blah. well, eh, I don't know. Um, like I said, I don't think it's just one person. I think he was maybe, um, a good pioneer of the early idea. Yeah. I, uh, I don't disagree. So look, um, final thoughts on the uh, the HBO special here because I, I I want us to take a look at some uh, some numbers articles. But um, overall, was this uh, was this good for Bitcoin? Was this bad for Bitcoin? I, I mean, I did did this make us look like morons? Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I know we're pretty good at doing that all on our own. Um, but what what are your thoughts? Like public perception? What did this leave the public? Like I, I know it's tough because we are in an echo chamber and you know like we're we we love Bitcoin, you know. So, but if we try to take ourselves out of that perspective from a normie space, how do you think this was received um, by just you know the quote unquote normies? Yeah, and no pl- no publicity is bad publicity. Uh, I work in marketing. Um, the the fact that they're even making a special about it um is is getting people intrigued about it now they're they're pushing people down down the i wonder who satoshi is rather than i wonder why satoshi made it rabbit you know type of thinking Mm -hmm. um and that's the way they're going to steer a lot of people but um at the same time this is a time where a lot of people are waking up so i think I think the fact that people are looking at this and saying, okay, it's obviously here because like it's important. Um, it wasn't a crypto documentary. This was a Bitcoin documentary. And it did show that a lot of other ones try to duplicate something that was already working. Um, so I think what it is is like I said, no publicity is bad publicity. If if we were not a threat, it wouldn't even be put on HBO at all. Yeah. Um, to even try and persuade people. Because a lot of people now, like, and especially at where we're at, um, people are starting to see through the sugar coated bullshit. Um, it's hard to market to a lot of us now as we wake up and you have to be truthful now. And um there's only so many people that are going to watch this and think, oh, I should be worried about who Satoshi is. I think a lot more people are going to be like, why are they showing us this? And that's way different than, than you know, the amount of people that would have been saying it four years ago. I think a lot has been opening up people's eyes. And um, I think this is going to make a lot more people think that this is something to research. Mm. Yeah. I, I I can appreciate that. Um, I did have another question, which it's something that uh, we didn't talk about, but we meant to talk about um, was that that whole theory, right? Because look, we we all know BlackRock, right, has the ETFs. They quote unquote hold a lot of Bitcoin, right? So, and as we know, right, um, HBO is owned by Warner Brothers, right? And Warner Brothers is a publicly traded company and the top holders, right? The two top holders of um, Warner Brothers is Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street Bank, right? So never heard those names before. Nobody knows who they are. Uh, <laughs> nobody knows who they are. But so let me ask you that, right? Like going on that that whole thing, uh, and we were talking about this at the beginning of the show, like 
do you think that there's any truth to the video being steered in the direction that it was, right? And this kind of goes back to Yellow's narrative about the new FUD, right? About kind of having Peter Todd as a Satoshi, right? With the 2% tail emissions. Do you, well, what do you think about that? Is that just like total tinfoil hat Bitcoiner? <laughs> Because I mean, it sounds plausible to well, me. Well, you know, well, like well, we've seen other look, fake satoshis. <laughs> so. Well, well, well. The the documentary obviously, you know, um, touched very, very briefly on Craig Bright. We are deeply sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. All right, sorry guys, we had some uh, some technical problems there. No, yeah, no, it, that's my fault. I'm, you know. Uh, surviving off of batteries that overheat my phone after the hurricane. So bear with me. Oh, no, yeah. um, I was talking about like how their focus was, okay, they started this Bitcoin documentary. It's a big, big, you know, a big documentary guy who's, who's well known. How does he sell it to the mainstream media? And uh, again, not sure where I got cut off, but, you know, where he was able to sell it is it it turned from a documentary about the I, idealism behind Bitcoin and it turned out, you know, into a focus on who is behind Bitcoin. Um, and the the big thing is, you know, strong minds think about idealism and talk about ideas. Uh, weak minds talk about people. And so all that I saw is that a documentary that had a lot of potential at the beginning, talking about the idea about it, talking about the FUD, ultimately, in order to sell to the mainstream, had to focus on who had to put a person as the focus instead of the actual idea why it was started. And so... That's exactly what this was, um, and this was a way to steer people away from it. Um, the one thing that I think I, I was saying earlier was any publicity is good publicity because the fact that they're even starting to say this, all the people who ever who have already started to wake up can now start to connect more dots and seeing it because it's so blatant, it's so obvious. Um, just the fact that we're there as a documentary on HBO means that they are trying to persuade people away from it. So we might as you know, we're doing something right. We we have their attention, and that's the way I look at it. Um, as far as fake Toshi, I mean, um, they just grabbed anybody that had any early communications and tried to put a spin on it as uh, however they would. Um, Obviously, Satoshi is way smarter than that. Hasn't been caught yet. Won't get caught now. And it won't be somebody on camera saying they're Satoshi even in jest. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. It's it's interesting. The uh, it's interesting this whole idea behind the Satoshi ness. You know, <laughs> like it's like all like that. That's you know, just because he was answering back in a thread. Uh, I'm talking about Peter Todd. You know, like and. Uh, anyways, it's just absolute ridiculousness. Okay. Well, even and then if you think about it, even even yeah. if even if whoever Satoshi is, even if they showed themselves now, they they don't really have much of a part in in the say anymore by design. Mm -hmm. Um, and and for somebody to be accused of being Satoshi for somebody who was trying to persuade this way one way, um, even to be backlashed by Satoshi at one point uh you know for the way it was being swayed is even more laughable to me hmm. Hmm. it's uh yeah i i appreciate your take though i uh i really did not think of the beginning of it as the difference between the idea versus the person i so i i really appreciate that i, I was really looking at, looking at it much more as the marketing versus the actual story they were intending to tell. Well, it's the so, same question. So I totally, isn't? yeah, I guess so. I, I just, I, I just didn't it's think of it from the other angle. It, yeah. It's how they're marketing and why that way. Yeah. The hive mind is more, con con uh, the hive mind is more concerned about the people. 
than it is the ideas behind them. I like that. It's a good point. And guys, this is going to wrap up the numbers. But before we go. Oh, we talked about numbers? Yeah, that's right. Before we go, that's exactly it. No, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's the number slash the news. But before we go, I just want to remind everyone, right? This tweet from Joe Consorti, who I know is not 58K gang, but he's doing a good job reminding everyone back to 2021. It's 58K forever. Okay. We're never escaping it. It's the forever 58K. Anyways, guys, that does it for the numbers. We are going to move it on over to the Fireside Chat. Pleb Underground is brought to you by our newest sponsor, No Hue. Check them out at nohue.com. That's right, guys. The best Bitcoin builders in the space are coming together under one banner. Look for more people and more companies to be joining nohue.com. Proof of Ink, Stack Chain Magazine, BTC Pins, Asanoha Gold, Crypto Cloaks, and BTC Sessions are already members. Go check out what's going on at nohue.com. Dot com. Pleb Underground is brought to you by CypherSafe. Check them out at CypherSafe.io. Guys, you know that I am a pet rock enjoyer, and this is the pet rock for Bitcoiners. That's right, the Bitcoin Relo Triangle. 16 ounces of solid titanium. Check it out at CypherSafe.io and look for new products that are going to be coming out very soon at CypherSafe.io. Welcome back, everyone. Fireside Chats. It's no surprise. We've got Don T. Selly, um, who may or may not be a giant portion of Bitcoin Twitter. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that. Just saying. Okay. Anyways, so look, Don, you are, um, I mean, we met, we, we actually hung out at uh, Bitcoin 2023 in Miami. We, uh, we spent a good time uh, chilling and getting ripped. Uh, that was fun. That was definitely fun. We had a, a lot of good chats and I ended up learning, which I did not know, that um, you are a man of many hats. And back then you were telling me this crazy story, how you're going to start this thing, this no hue thing, and it's going to have all these brands and we're going to do all this stuff. And I was like, this sounds amazing. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, right, we uh, we're, we're talking several months later, maybe even almost a year later. And this thing is taken off the ground, nohue.com. And as the viewers may or may not know, you're our newest, our newest sponsor to the show. And I think this would be a fantastic opportunity to understand what is nohue.com. Because I've gone, I've gone through the website multiple times. It, I know you're incorporating all of like my favorite Bitcoiners and and their and their brands and what they're making like BTC pins and crypto cloaks and you've got BTC sessions on there you know like and so just explain to the viewers what is the vision where is this going and then we can dive into like the seven other projects you're working on. <laughs> <laughs> well, they kind of all all can can screw together. Um, so the big the big thing between uh, behind No Hue is. Um, we're building like a kind of uh, th the first portion. So uh, is we're building like the Amazon for plebs where we basically do a, a lot of help with the marketing, fulfillment, shipping. I have warehouses on the East Coast and then also in uh, South America and Central America now um, where <clears throat> we're basically helping plebs focus more on what they're passionate about and help them with the building of websites, their marketing approach, um, as, as well as, you know, also giving them more uh, of a central position where some of their products, their shipping costs just as much as their products. So to actually put a lot of Bitcoiners products together, that helps, but it's also a place where people can feel safe going to where this is all proof of work. These are Bitcoiners, Bitcoin maxis. Um, you know, we, we've all fallen down a lot of different rabbit holes. So we actually, you know, curate a lot of these trustworthy Bitcoiners. And it's a, it's a way to not only support Bitcoin, you know, we look at it as Bitcoin is only a tool, right? It's what we're building around it that's going to make it successful. We need to rebuild our, our our local circular economies, right? And so a big portion of that is is what we want to do down the road with this. 
but it's also we're competing on a global front because they already have global tools against us too. So we're also going to be integrating something like an Angie's list into this. Um, so we have been curating a directory of a whole bunch of, you know, trade works people who are, who are accepting Bitcoin. So everybody can start finding, you know, ex especially the people who want to stay within this or the people who get bait in Bitcoin. Um, it's easier to go to people who accept Bitcoin. Um, yeah. So we're building, we're building, we're, we're, the, the whole point is it is to make everything easier in our transition from the USD to Bitcoin and giving a Bitcoin only platform um, where we can kind of build everything together as we grow this network and make that transition. Um, the main focus at this point right now is we we do do a lot of uh, wholesale products for a lot of Bitcoin companies. Um, so Bitcoin mining companies, um, you know, Bitcoin exchanges, where instead of them just going to, you know, some cheap outlet to just get a whole bunch of merchandise. Now we have a whole hood of a slew of partners who are able to fill, fulfill all of that by accepting Bitcoin, doing everything in Bitcoin, but also having that proof of work where we stand by our work. You know, I stand by my partners and, and the hard work they put in everything. And it's kind of rebuilding everything we've lost. It's it's rebuilding that trust. It's rebuilding that network um, where, you know, instead of logging into Amazon one day, I hope to, you guys would be logging into Know You. Um, to see what services you can get for the same, uh, you know, through Bitcoiners, uh, which will probably have higher value and, and you know, be of higher quality. I, I, I really like that. And, you know, about the Bitcoin circular economy, I, I know that some people um, tend to, I mean, some Bitcoiners tend to clown that, right? Because uh, it depends, right? It depends on why you came to Bitcoin. Some people are just, you know, NGU you know, maxis or, you know, they're just there to, you know, make their, you know, the fiat trad fi gains and that's it. And it's like, they laugh about this and and, and that's perfectly fine. But to your point, right, I, I really believe that, you know, if we expect for Bitcoin to truly, uh, to truly win, right, not, not like, not, not just kind of like partial wins, right, not just get like a bunch of trad fi bros in, but actually like building out, um, then that circular economy is incredibly important. And, you know, personally, I transact in Bitcoin, you know, like as often as I possibly can. So in my eyes, it's a it's a no brainer. And I understand, right, for the people that are just hodling it and only see it as a, a store of value and, and just ignore its other qualities, you know, they think that, you know, what we're doing is right kind of foolish sometimes um, or all the time. But I beg to differ because to a certain extent, right, the more people that are using Bitcoin, the more people that are most likely holding Bitcoin and the most the more people that are getting exposure to Bitcoin's qualities, right? Like I came to Bitcoin through medium of exchange. I didn't understand um, store value. I didn't even understand or care about hard cap, you know, so I only saw it through that one lens. So I really think that what you're doing is uh, is really important, and uh, and I appreciate it obviously. And uh, you know we're looking for looking for big things, right? Big things from No Hue. So very excited. Yeah, well we're we're, build, but, we're building it in tiers. You know we wanna we wanna make sure as we grow we're we're doing everything correctly. Um, you know we have load time preference, so we're gonna be doing it right. Um, and I have, I will be launching each tier as I'm ready to do it. So we just did the beta right now. We're just testing it out. We have, um, we're kind of just finishing the last design fixes and everything, um, to, to do the official rollout. But I mean, it's operational right now, um, for testing. I mean, orders can go through, um, and we're going to be adding a new partner every week. Uh, starting in November. So we're we're gonna we have eight up to 18 partners now that we're about to start announcing um in in that tier. Um so it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. Um you know I've been saying that I was gonna do this like I said last time you said I've been saying I was gonna do this for a while but it you know low time preference so we can do it right. You know it's Bitcoin only it's building with Bitcoin only you know um 
things that we trust and that is of high quality. Um, but also, like you were saying, you know, rebuilding that local economy is is important too. So we also support the beef initiative and and other projects like that because at the end of the day, you know, health is is the number one for us and our families. So you know, don't forget about those avenues. Those are things we want to incorporate down the line, um, either through the site or just through partnerships and support. And uh, the beef initiative, um, that's uh, Modern Tea Man, right? And on, on Twitter, right? He's, uh, I think he's kind of like the spearhead of that. Yeah, there's a couple of them. A couple um, of the guys? You know, okay, I thought uh, it was just him. I guess it's grown. Sir, yeah, there's, there's, there's quite a guy, uh, a few... Um, but just that initiative and just the initiative of, of verifying your food in general, um, Becoming more important, right. And, and trying to get it local, um, as well, because, you know, we have a lot of disaster areas here now where you're going to have to start relying on people locally, but you're also going to have to, um, know where to get it if something happens you know so there's those networks on beef initiative where wherever you end up you can still get the right the right you know food absolutely um i wanted to ask you uh you were talking about low time preference so ballpark roadmap you said next month we're going to start to uh we're going to start you're going to start to roll out partners um new partners uh, which, by the way, Pleb Underground is going to be uh, advertising and letting and letting the good folks know. But what is the uh, the longer term roadmap? Can you can you share any of it, or it it's not there yet? Oh, I have a roadmap, um, but it's <laughs> it's. Well, I've got a roadmap, Phil. <laughs> oh, oh, I I do, I do, but it's I not as. But it's way it's it's way smaller than the Ethereum one, so we're good. <laughs> so it um, actually makes sense. Uh, you're not, you're yeah, not going to do a purge and the splurge and the merge. Yeah. So um, when purge. So 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 right now right now my focus is on um, putting together packages together where we we have a lot of our partners working together. So um, the initial partners right now, we have, you know, BTC pins who does a lot of our pins engraving and such like that. Um, you know, under proof of ink, we also have, you know, I mean, sorry, that <laughs> under no hue, we have proof of ink. Um, so me and John were our partners on both of those projects. So we have, you know, the shirts, we have engraving, we have uh, a bunch of services for prints as well under that. Um, and then we have, um uh, artists that are joining us so you know asanoa is one of the our artists that is under us um we are getting ready to join with um a small partnership with btc trading cards um and plenty of others uh that that are going to be coming up here um stack chain magazine is also a partner of ours which you know we we have always had a good relationship with Stack Chain Magazine between uh, us and Proof of Ink. Um, you know, me and John help out with those projects. So um, it's it's a way to incorporate everything. So a lot of bigger businesses that are looking for, you know, marketing and everything, um, this is a great place to look for it for just, you know, your merchandise. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, under no hue, we run 42 different handles within Bitcoin Twitter which I'm sure most people know is why we hear uh, everyone is Selly or why we now just heard it for the first time. And then you're going to uh, spend the next 24 hours, whatever. Um, but, Wondering who's Selly. Yeah. So, but, but basically right now the first tier is being a one-stop shop for, for marketing to help out with Bitcoiners because right now you can't market to us the same way that we've been market to it before. Um, you start a commercial with that sugar coated bullshit and we're already turned off. Right. So in order to market to Bitcoiners, you have to have a Bitcoiner who understands that. And that's, that's part of what this has been built around. Um, that as well as, you know, the, the type of people we surround ourselves with is we're actually building something to compete locally and globally, um, with the current system. And I think, our morals and the way we're doing it is 
is going to be doing it right to where it's going to be easy competition for us. Um, so our whole thing is to rebuild what we lost, um, to rebuild the tools and the communities that were lost and that give Bitcoin an actual need. Because if these things weren't being taken away, Satoshi would have never felt the need to build a system to build it back up. And if you look back on his early emails, it was libertarianism that he was trying to build this system for. He was saying that libertarian uh, libertarians are going to really be the front to start accepting this first. Mm. And and it what it is is because they're taking away our cash, and this is our last step, our last ability to really be able to run our communities without the government being looking at everything that we do and controlling everything we do. Um, we're at you know we're at the end of of the country because uh, the regulations are so far fetched and they're not going to get any better. Yeah. The, the attack on cash is definitely an attack on free speech. Um, I, it's very, it's something very interesting about Bitcoiners, right? Bitcoiners are huge proponents of cash and Bitcoin, you know, and, and it's like, we understand that it's government paper. We totally understand that it's government paper, but it is a widely accepted government paper that allows us to transact freely and that a hundred percent the removal of this okay um that is by design uh, i don't know if you saw that uh i don't know where hillary clinton was speaking uh but she was mentioning essentially like the the dangers right of social media and um and essentially how uh you know, misinformation has to be reined in. And it's, it's very, it's very scary, right? Because we, we understand like, you know, that the cover, governments aren't infallible, right? That we know that, right? Governments aren't always correct. So this idea that this, um, that some type of a group can be the arbiter of, of truth, um, that themselves is flawed at the core. It just makes like, I genuinely feel like it's gaslighting. Like that, that's insane shit. You know, like it doesn't oh. make any sense. Like it's pure hubris, you know? Oh, I mean, it's a hundred percent gaslighting all the time with yeah. everything all the time. <laughs> <laughs> if you think it's not gaslighting, it's usually gaslighting. We're being gaslit right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, like, I mean, it's crazy. Um, yeah, it is. I was going to say something right there, but you, then you mentioned Hillary and then I'm sorry. my brain. No, it's fine. Then my brain was just like, I started thinking of other things. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, it's all rhetoric. It's all, you know, um, the country had its shit together when it was in God we trust, when we had something some sort of you know family values and morale tied to the dollar uh in 1971 although they didn't change it on the dollar it's in government we trust and so um they didn't say that blatantly but when they disconnected the dollar from an actual asset physical asset like gold uh and they connected it to just trust in the government um that whole rhetoric went out the window and that's where we're at. So anything you ask me past that point, I just, you know, we've just been watching exactly how that's played out. Yeah. I, I, I can't disagree. And it's, it's pretty scary stuff. And even though we'd, we'd love to believe, you know, that, that somehow governments have the, uh, our best interests at heart. Um, that's just not real. It's, it's just pure fantasy. Total fantasy. Okay, we're gonna. Well, uh, the, yeah. the bigger the bigger the government the the bigger the government the less you trust. Um, you know, if a government was actually doing its job, it wouldn't have to be so big. Because it would solve a problem and then be able to move its resources to the next problem, instead of having us reinvest more and more in the same problems that are affecting each other year after year. I think that's a very good point. Um, 
it's sad, right? It's, it's a really strange thing because a person isn't incentivized to take away their own job, right? So a person in an organization is incentivized to solidify their position there and to essentially keep earning, right? And essentially when it comes to the government, their job is also to do the same thing, right? Become more and more necessary and increase its footprint so that it becomes less and less possible or likely to function without, or to have the impression of functioning without them. So it's to your point, like, it's really strange, you know, like you'd think that we'd be incentivized for freedom. You think that we would be incentivized, um, you know, for personal responsibility and on an individual level that does happen, right? Not like, not, I'd say on a grand scale, but I, I feel like that does happen. There are individuals who feel this way, but yet somehow as a society, we're just really, um, I don't know if it's lazy, but you know, we just kind of want to offset our thinking, offset our responsibility, right? Just kind of hand it over to that trusted third party, you know, make things better. Uh, convenience is the tool of the devil, right? So the more and more you, you allow convenience, um, the, the more and more you are, I mean, okay. Another, a better quote would be, uh, you get what you tolerate, right? So the more and more, convenient things are for you the more you're going to tolerate um even though it may not you may not agree on how it became convenient to you slave labor things like that right um there's there's a bunch of different things i could say to that right but um you know at the end at the end of the day you get what you tolerate and it's it's not something that's um, they can change overnight. It's something that they keep changing gradually and gradually and gradually. And if you're not paying attention to it, stepping. then, you know, if, if, if all of a sudden you tolerate this or you tolerate that, you get to a point where we are now. Um, and it doesn't happen overnight. It's something that they have to change your mind on. So just, you know, pay attention to what you say or, or what you hear. Um, but both, right? So when you regurgitate something you hear, know what you're saying um, instead of just saying it. Mm. Don't trust verify. There was a bunch of other things um, that I was going to say there, but uh, what, what, was, what was the beginning? What was the first part of that? Because I had something I wanted to say there. Oh, I, I was I was just talking about the the government overreach, and we were talking about them them growing essentially. And you had started off with the government, uh, you know, like a essentially oh, a small I answered government that one is more efficient. Good. Yeah, yeah, I answered that <laughs> one pretty good. <laughs> you crushed that one, man. That that question's gone. That's right. Uh, no, no we, but, we were getting into something after that, and then. Well, we were gonna. It's, it's we, fine. It's. I mean, it's fine. I mean, I'm sure you're gonna have plenty of. Stuff yeah, we, we were going to move on. We were going to move on because the podcast is never okay. going to end and, and you have and you have a hard stop as well. So we oh, still yeah. Do talk I, about, what time is it? It's like 215. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're okay, almost you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. You're fine. So um, we're going to move on, though. Uh, we're going to move on and we are going to talk about um, well, you, you slightly mentioned Stack Chain magazine. So let's talk about that before um, we talk about ASO Bitcoin, and that'll be the, uh, the the final thing that we talk about. But just so look, Stack Chain Magazine. I um I love what you guys I love what you guys are doing. I I always see the posts. Obviously, Pleb Underground. We uh we have we have a an agreement where uh, you guys allow us to repost uh, some of your awesome articles, and you know we tag you in that stuff. I love the graphics. I love the stories. I love your layouts. I think this is like totally the vibe. Okay. I really and and I know some some Bitcoin magazine people might not like it, right? But that in my eyes Stack Chain magazine became the Bitcoiners magazine. That that's just my impression, right? Like I I get it. I get that Bitcoin magazine is huge and all the eyes and and all that good stuff, but to me it's like that's not where the that's not where the signal is necessarily. You know, it's like and and I get it. They and I'm not trying to be mean to the I've no I know good Bitcoiners, solid people that that work, you know, for Bitcoin Magazine and everything like that. But I'm just talking about in terms of like perception, 
I feel like you guys, um, you guys are doing it. You know, you guys are doing it well. So, anyways, now now I'm done being a being a uh, Stack Chain Magazine fan. Um, what are the what are the future plans for for Stack Chain Magazine, and how like how feasible is it? Are you guys gaining traction? Like, what's that journey like? Because I I know from other publishers, it's it's not that easy. You know, it's a that that that's a tough, you know, that's a tough one. <laughs> well, um. No, thank thank you for your kind words. Um, we 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 all at Stack Chain love love our audience, and um, thank you so much for saying all that. There, um, the the cool thing about Stack Chain is it was started just for fun, um, and one of the things that we're sticking with is, you know, it's going to be rel- it's going to be there as long as it's still fun for us. Um, we don't want to burn out any of the people that work and contribute with it. Um, it's funny you mentioned Bitcoin magazine. I don't, um, talk about that too much. Uh, you know, because it's not like we're entirely their nemesis, right? We have totally different, we have totally different business models, right? Um, you know, I, we actually, uh have fans from you know the staff over there won't throw them under the bus uh (laughs) exactly (laughs) but 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 uh the 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 cool thing is um our models are different so uh, we don't accept any sponsors um we if if anybody wants to contribute they can contribute and then the core staff um basically deciphers you know what's in the magazine and what's not so it's it's very democratic as as far as the amount of you know um the the it's not one person is in charge of the whole magazine um we argue every week uh some weeks i some weeks i'll duck out because i'm like i don't I, i'm not going to argue this week they can argue this one but like no uh but like we argue it out it's very democratic and um the, the one thing is, is, you know, we all run it together. Um, mm. And so what we've curated, it, it's become really, really cool because it's Bitcoin only. Um, and, and the people who we work with, it's all Bitcoin maximalists. And, you know, that the, to to work with fellow Bitcoin maximalists on this project and that project and to make it fun to help everybody you know, um, just it's basically like bringing Bitcoin Twitter to life as as a print magazine, right? In all its glory, glory, and in all its, you know, craziness, love, and regardedness, right? That's what it is. And the the biggest point for us is, you know, we're gonna do it as long as it's fun, um, and as long as it helps with Bitcoin adoption and it helps with culture. So. Um, it's, it's really, it's really, really cool to be a part of that team and, and, and watch it grow. Um, as far as asking, you know, what, what are we looking for in the future? Um, we're sticking to quarterly issues. Um, I am in charge of, we're doing a small holiday print again this year, like we did last year. Um, which is again, going to be one of the rarest issues, uh, out there, but we don't, we're not fixated on growing faster than we need to. Um, uh, again, a reason why this aligns a lot with with Proof of Ink and and No Hue and and our other projects is its low time preference. So we could have accepted a whole bunch of sponsors. Um, you know, there was a there was a point where a lot of people from Bitcoin Magazine, sponsor wise and staff wise, were reaching out to us. Uh, I won't say more than that, but. Um, that's not our model. We didn't have, you know, everybody so far who's been a part of a magazine has just contributed it and they've been done it willingly. Mm -hmm. Um, There are a few things like, so for the covers and and for other things, there are are a few different times where we've requested it, like the late, the the last issue. Um, We've, we've always had a collaboration with, with ready for Maxi's club. So we, um, we did request that last one to be done, um, which was beautifully done, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but she's always been a part of the magazine for the other issues uh, and just contributing her work. Just, hey, 
from one Bitcoin or to another. So um, that's that's how, we're, you know, so it's it's really it really goes back to what I've been saying is we're all building our community back together. Um, Bitcoiners are are the best people to work with. And that's why everything that I've been that I talked to, to you about building back in uh, to 2023 or, or so. Mm -hmm. So what, a year and a half ago almost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is coming to fruition is just because I've been working with Bitcoiners. We all understand what we need to do, how we need to lean on each other. And honestly, it's been the best people that I've ever worked with. Um, speaking with, I don't think I've given him a shout out, but, but Ben, uh, so I work for BT sessions. <laughs> he's, he's my favorite boss in the world. Just, just shout that out now. Sorry. Shout out BTC sessions. <laughs> he, he didn't get brought up yet, but love you, buddy. No. And for the best, the best Bitcoin instructional videos uh, for everything, everything. I learned a lot of my, learned a lot of my stuff about uh, signing devices from BTC Sessions. So yes, check them out, BTC Sessions. I figured might as well, you know. <laughs> why not? <laughs> I've done it before. Do so that if like, you yeah, want to, not? whatever. Yeah, it's all good. Hey, look, yeah, yeah. The, it, it, the reality it, it, is if it wasn't true, I wouldn't say it, so. Yeah, that's you, you know <laughs> that's the do point. what you want with that <laughs> <laughs> um but yes uh okay so so stack chain magazine we're gonna move on we're gonna move on from stack chain magazine i i love i love what you guys are doing there i hope that you keep doing it um i hope that the uh i hope that the passion stays uh because believe it or not a lot of that grassroots type of stuff um you know that that's the stuff that kind of speaks to the to the fringes and it, it's very interesting because the fringes are usually where you get the people that start something new the people that are willing to take risks and the people that are willing to see the world in a different way so the grassroots stuff is extremely important and i appreciate absolutely it. and 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 this is becoming you know a part of bitcoin history intended or not so i'd love to be a part of it <laughs> yep absolutely all right. So speaking of Bitcoin history, because of course I, we're not even going to be able to cover all of Don T's hats. We're just covering three of the twenty, or eighteen, or whatever the number is. Okay. So mm -hmm. next thing, ASO Bitcoin, and uh, you are tell us tell us what what tell us what ASO Bitcoin is. Here first, I'm going to pull up the site. Right. So, so um, ASOBitcoin.org. Get to know the Bitcoin Association of El Salvador. So. Exactly. So, um, so I do, what is this? <laughs> so I, I do help out, I do help out with, with ASO, um, as you just saw the, it's mm -hmm. the association of Bitcoin of El Salvador. So it's a nonprofit organization that has been helping with adoption, um, raising funds, putting in events, putting in, uh, helping with the infrastructure, uh, within El Salvador. Um, and the reason why I became a part of this project was because it's, it's important to me that, one of the first countries that is adopting Bitcoin that we can support them as much as we can to make it successful. One, um, so that we can learn from, you know, mistakes and things like that, but also um, give, give the tools that it needs. Like I said, Bitcoin is only a tool. There's things we need to build on top of it um, to make it successful. So, and you know, it's starting in El Salvador. If they didn't have the tools necessary, they didn't have a, a lot of the things that they needed. Um, guess what? Mainstream media would have done right. Exactly what they did anyway. Until now, they're talking about it, right? So, um, what we, what we do is we we do a lot of relationships, uh, bringing in companies, talking about negotiations and things like that to bring in things like ATMs um build build out the network put the atms where they need to be but not just that we we do a lot of events you know we have uh, adopting bitcoin coming up here in november um and then you know educational events in the areas that that need bitcoin the most um to teach them how to use the software correctly um mm -hmm. you know in el zante we have the bitcoin store there that that actually helps teach them how to do uh you know learn how to actually use the hardware but you know out there infrastructure is just as important as education is because a lot of people are driving two hours to the bank just to put in their cash, just to get wow. it there. 
And then, you know, that's a whole day. That, that's their whole day, right? So they, they spend Monday through Friday working, and then they spend Saturday trying to get all their money to the bank in time while they all stand in line for two hours after driving two hours. So building the infrastructure with the ATMs and the, the um, education, and then also we, we bring POS systems uh, to different communities. So we've been building it in the, com the communities that need it the most and going from there. So I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, Bitcoin, uh, obviously Bitcoin uh, point of sale systems, right? Um, so just just curious, just curious, are you able to shed some light on who the hardware manufacturers are for that? Because that to me has seems, and I know it's probably not about El Salvador, but it's just like, you know, like when you go to a, a regular, like a Walmart or something like that, and you go to the terminal, right? That's usually owned by like, like, um, uh, Moneris or like one of these kind of companies, right? And I, I or um, what's that one that starts with the N? Damn it. Anyways, whatever. Um, it, it's just like the, the the companies that manufacture all of these these pay terminals, and I and I feel like the the ones that put the software on it, it's like we need to get in there, right? We need them to add the Bitcoin network to those point of sale systems. So going back to my original question. Who are the like? If you could share, do you know any of the hardware manufacturers that are that are providing this, or is this just like Bitcoiners putting this stuff together like ad hoc? Uh, so it's a combination of things. Um, what I could do is I could go ahead and and maybe share a list with you after this. Um, okay. That way you have the list. Um, but it, it depends country to country. Um, oh, but, um, makes sense. A lot of it. So so and. Um, I know one of the things that, you know, those L's that you get, like when you're at the restaurant. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. So in El Salvador, um, I know, uh, I believe it's K1 that has integrated um, Bitcoin into those terminals, uh, which we've we've um, worked with uh, in a couple companies um, to integrate at, at restaurants down there in, in Mexico when I was was helping out with La Paz. Um so I will get you the list because it's I work with a lot of different countries and it's different companies that are working on different integrations there. Very nice. Now that that that's good stuff. And I'm glad it's not just one, right? Um, I'm glad that it's it's a whole bunch of different ones because as you know, right, as we've seen in the States, you know, when when the government decides for whatever reason to start shutting down on ramps and stuff like that, uh, you know, everybody scatters. Right. We saw it with Wallet of Satoshi, among others, you know, so that was, uh, was some pretty crazy stuff. I think that's uh, I think that's all the, the questions that I uh, that I actually had for this. But um, look, uh, before we wrap up, you have any uh, any final thoughts? Anything that you uh, you wanted to share with the viewers that uh, that I didn't ask you about or. Uh, no, just. Uh, sit back, relax. Um do your best to to enjoy low time preference before um the mainstream media gets you back in the wind, world wind of what they're they're trying to stir up right now mm. uh don't trust verify and just keep building together with the people you know and trust very well said very well said and for the viewers and listeners if they want to get in touch with don which account? How do they find you? What's the best they way? No, they, don't. <laughs> they don't. They just they, they just tweet out to Bitcoin Twitter. It's like no, the bat signal. Uh, it's the Don. It's the Don T. Sally signal. Yeah. The, the put out the, the rooster. To, the, the best way to get to me is through Nohue. So uh, team at nohue.com is the email. That's your best bet. Or just you know posting something funny on Twitter that uh, you know got my attention. My uh, I run a lot of accounts, so my DMs are usually wrecked. And um, I can confirm. We uh, <laughs> and uh, I just I, I I was in the Carolinas where we just got hit by the hurricane, so um, my signal got wrecked, and I had to switch phones in the middle of it. So if uh, I owe you an email, I'm I'm getting to it. Just glad you're so, okay, man. Yeah, I got back to Phil, so you're next. Everybody yeah, else. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. All right, guys, all of that information is going to be in the show notes. That is going to wrap up episode 107 of the Pleb Underground Weekly 
show. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check us out on our audio-only platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. If you want to stream a sats, check us out on Fountain.fm. Guys, we're going to catch you next week. Peace. More toxic, more toxic than the most toxic pick on Maxi Empire.